Hey everyone, my name is Tristan and welcome to my workshop. This is the final part of the All EVA Foam Clone Armor build series. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I painted the armor, how I attached everything together, and what I would change if I had to make it again. This video will be full of helpful information for anyone who wants to make a clone armor out of foam or really anything out of foam. If you don't already know, this armor was made using templates which I made myself from 3D printed clone armor. And those templates are available over on my Etsy store along with many other great templates. The link to my store will of course be in the description below. As you can see, I added a couple more scratch build pieces to my armor because I was making the Umbra Operative Art Trooper from Battlefront 2. Modifying your clone armor is something really fun you can do to make it your own. Because this is the last part of the build series, there's gonna be an epic b-roll at the end of the video featuring the finished armor and I think it's my best b-roll yet. So make sure you watch the whole video to not miss anything interesting. This video won't have an outro so I'm telling you right now thank you for watching and make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy it. So let's see what it took to finish this armor. Enjoy! Here are all the parts of the armor including some of the arc trooper add-ons I built. I already applied two coats of filler on all the visible seams and imperfections on my armor. The filler I use is this Liquitex light modeling paste. I like it because it's easy to sand once dry. To sand the filler, I like to use 80 and 150 grit sandpaper on a paint stick. Using a paint stick gives the best results in my opinion. And here are a couple more pieces with the filler on them. It's time to paint the armor, but first we have to seal the foam. And for that, I like to use Plasti Dip. I used black and grey Plasti Dip because that's what I had on hand. I applied two thick coats over all the parts of the armor, but the more coats you apply, the better. Make sure you wear a respirator when spraying Plasti Dip or paint, even if you do it outside. Spray paint is really bad to breathe in, especially if you spend a couple days spraying a full set of armor. Once the plastic dip was dry, I applied two light coats of a matte black spray paint by Rust-Oleum. Be careful when using this 2x paint because it really likes to run and that's something we really don't want at this point in the build. Here are all the parts painted black, and I think they look pretty good. I gave the black paint two full days to dry and then I masked everything I wanted to stay black. I did all the masking using frog tape and scotch delicate surface tape and I have to say they worked amazingly. Next, it was time for the orange, and I used Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch Gloss Orange. The only reason I didn't use matte is because I couldn't find it from Rust-Oleum. I carefully sprayed three light coats over every part that have orange on them. There's only some of the parts here. I also painted the helmet the same way as the rest of the armor. I gave the orange paint a whole week to dry because gloss spray paint is known to react with other paints if you don't give them enough time to dry. After that, I painted the scratches and paint chips using the same black paint as earlier. I just sprayed it in a bowl and used a brush to apply it. Here's how a finished piece looks. I also painted on silver scratches because I like the look, even though it's not accurate. And for that, I used Spaz Sticks Mirror Chrome paint, but you could use any silver paint. And finally, I used a satin clear coat from rust to protect my paint job and to get an even finish. I really regret using this clear coat because it chips off really easily. I normally use it for my helmets that don't need to flex that much, but looks like it's not the right finish for an armor. But with the clear coat on, I finally had a really cool art trooper armor in front of me. Some of the parts I had to make or modify for the Arc Trooper were the rocket and communication pad on the forearms, the pauldrons, the chest cover and ammo pouch, the shoe covers, some details on the lower legs, and of course the helmet, commas, and holsters for the DC-17s. And here are the DC-17s which I 3D printed. So now you know how I painted the armor. We'll get to how I attached everything soon, but first I want to talk about what I would change about the paint. I think the reason the paint cracks so much on my armor is not because of any of the products I use. I actually think it's combining all of them together which creates the problem. Plastic dip works great, but by adding five to six coats of paint plus two coats of clear, it's not so flexible anymore. And the reason the clear coat didn't stick to the paint underneath is because that paint was fully cured once I applied the clear. 
waiting too long is just as bad as not waiting long enough. To summarize, too many coats of paint equals not flexible and not following cure times equals flaky paint. So now that I've learned from my mistakes, I did a couple more tests. So how would I paint my armor if I had to do it again? First, I would replace the Plastidip with three to four coats of latex house paint. Matte black works great. Just make sure you heat seal your foam first. Latex house paint is great to properly seal EVA foam. It dries really fast and doesn't smell bad. The only downside is you have to apply lots of coats. Next for the colors, I would use regular acrylic paint. Liquitex Basics acrylic paint work really well and cover nicely. After the black base, you can tape off the areas that need to stay black and cover the rest with orange acrylic paint. The orange won't cover as well, so you might need to add a white base first. Then you can do the scratches and paint chips with black and silver acrylic paint, and that's pretty much it. I did some testing and turns out the Rust-Oleum clear coat doesn't crack or flake as easily over the acrylic paint. So if you're brave, you can add two light coats over your whole armor to get an even finish. But be careful because the latex paint might react with the clear coat if you don't cover it with acrylic paint first. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Heat seal the foam, then latex paint, then acrylic paint, and finally, if you want, add a clear coat. And the coolest thing is, if you bend the foam too much and the paint starts to fold, you can heal it with the heat from a hair dryer. I haven't painted any of my projects this way yet, but from my tests, it looks pretty promising. So, now that the whole armor is painted, it's time for the final part of this build, which is to attach everything together. So, let's get right into that. Let's start with the shoes and go up from there. This piece right here stays on the shoes using safety pins glued on each end. All you have to do is to thread them on the fabric of your shoes. Of course, make sure you have fabric shoes because this won't work on leather shoes. The shoe covers aren't in the templates, but I'll show you how to attach them anyway. First, an elastic loop goes around your foot to keep it in place. There's also a nylon loop that opens and closes with Velcro. This one slips under the laces on your shoes to keep the piece from lifting. And that's it for the shoes, let's move on to the lower legs. And they're really simple parts to put on. They open on the side with a zipper and they don't attach to anything else. Moving up to the thighs and knee guards, they attach together using an elastic. This gives those pieces flexibility and prevents the knees from slipping under the thigh armor. And to make my armor easy to transport, I make the knees removable with Velcro. When you want to put the armor on, all you have to do is to line up the strips of Velcro and push them together. There's also a piece of velcro on top of the thighs and that's to keep them from slipping down from the cut piece. The belt assembly is the most complicated part to attach together. As you can see mine has the holsters for the DC-17s and they just slip in super easily. And here are the straps to attach to the thighs. To disassemble the parts, I start by removing the belt which is held in place using a lot of velcro. It also holds the abs to the cut piece and the butt plate. The abdominal section opens at the back so you can put it on easily. It also has a harness made from nylon webbing. The harness is there to make sure the belt assembly doesn't slip down when you wear the armor. Now you can remove the cut piece from the belt and as you can see it has the straps for the thighs. And the butt plate also comes off easily. Finally the holsters also stay in place with velcro. And that's it for the belt. Moving on to the chest assembly, the ammo pouch is held in place with a patch of velcro. The pauldrons and chest cover are a single piece that stays in place with four magnets, three at the front and one in the back. The opposing magnets are hidden inside the chest plate. The art trooper backpack is also held in place using magnets. As you can see they protrude a bit from the backpack, that's so they fit in the four holes on the back plate which has four magnets on the inside. Moving on to the shoulders, they stay in place with velcro on a nylon strap that is permanently attached to the chest plate. Same thing goes for the biceps. And that's it for the chest plate assembly. Next, for the elbow guards, they just slip in place on your arms and they should stay on there pretty well. Same thing goes for the forearms, they just slip in place and that's it. Finally, the gloves. The hand plates stay on with velcro and I made sure to get really comfortable gloves with the rubber grips on the hand. If you're wondering, those are gloves for running. The last thing I want to talk about is reinforcing pieces with nylon webbing. That's a really important thing to do if you want your armor to last. First, the shoulder straps on the chest plate are reinforced on the inside, and by the way, I glued on the nylon straps with hot glue. Next, the elbow guards have really thin straps, so I reinforced all around the inside. And I did the same thing for the knee guards. Using nylon webbing makes the pieces crazy strong. And finally, after all this work, 
My all EVA foam arc trooper armor is finally finished. 